the Renault R35 from Tamiya. I picked up this kit because I really enjoy the new tracks that Tamiya has put in all their kits. Done away with some of the rubber band tracks, which I really don't like working with. These had their own problems though. Uh, you couldn't remove them once you build the model, but the rest of the model put together quite well, just like most Tamiya kits. And the only other problem I had was uh, the directions were a little confusing as to exactly where to put these drivetrain parts. So I just wanted to point that out. And other than that, I needed to add a slit for the exhaust because that detail was omitted. Since this tank is so small, you probably won't even notice this once I add rust effects. So if you don't have the patience to do something like this, I wouldn't worry about it. Next, it was time for the usual armor texture treatment. Just use some Tamiya putty and some extra thin cement. Then it was on to these tracks, which like I said, worked really well. Uh, put together really easy, just as long as you follow the directions. But once you put them on, there's really no way to take them off. So painting and weathering around them is probably going to be a little bit more difficult. The main running gear does not come off once you put the rest of the pieces, detail pieces on. So once I added the tracks, I could not get that sprocket off, so they had to stay on. Which should be okay. Uh, this tank is going to be weathered very heavily in mud, so it shouldn't be a problem. And since the tracks are staying on, I felt like I could glue on all the other pieces as well that kind of surround the tracks. And then it was time for the most interesting part of this build. All of the reference photos I could find were captured R35s and they were captured by the German army. When they were testing and photographing these tanks, they removed the trench skids that were originally put on the tank. Uh, the French believed that World War II would also use trench warfare, where small light tanks needed more length to get across trenches without falling in. So they put a skid on the back of the tank. Obviously, World War II did not have uh, much trench warfare, if at all, and these skids were not needed. But I'm not building a captured German R35. I'm building a French R35, which means it needs the skid attached, which doesn't come with the kit, which would be a little bit of a dilemma in any other circumstance. But I am lucky enough to own a 3D printer, so I decided to design and 3D print a skid for the R35. Now my original idea for this video was to scratch build a tank skid by hand and then design one in Tinkercad like this and 3D print it. However, I went through all of my styrene, all the smallest pieces, and everything was still too big for the scale. This is a very small tank, and the skid itself is even smaller, and it just looked chunky. There are some aftermarket kits that you can buy for this. Um, I obviously did not see all of them, but the ones I saw also looked rather large for the scale. So this is my pitch for 3D printing. If I had bought an aftermarket kit to make this skid, 
I might not have been happy with it. I, I may have, but the increase in quality comes at a price. And I know a lot of people think to get into a 3D printer is expensive. However, with the aftermarket prices the way they are, this might be, in the long run, a better option. Now, it wasn't perfect. My first print had a bit of a disaster coming out of the scaffolding, but again, that's the glory of 3D printing. If I had just broken that, I could print myself another one. And I did. Once you have the print, it is a matter of getting it out of the scaffolding. And something like this is a little bit complicated. But I always take the scaffolding off before I cure it. That way, the resin isn't as brittle. After that, you just need to use CA glue to attach it to the rest of the model. And you're good to go. That's going to do it for this week. Next week, we're going to start on a base for this model. And it's going to be a much smaller diorama than our last one. Hopefully, we can better utilize space. Thanks for watching. See you next time.